I'll share it once we're going. If you like. Yep. Okay, and we are live, Dave. Sweet. Right. Well, first thing I've got to say is um, thank you. Thank you very much for. Um, uh, Thank you very much for coming uh, and speaking to me today, Dave. It's I'm really, really excited about about having you here. Uh, also, Matt. Well, I hope I can live up to your excitement and uh, expectations. But uh, as uh, past mates who uh, introduced me to um, a, a, a sweet, uh, very sweet local product of a distillery up there, um, I'm sure we will catch up. Well, you just have to um, mute your uh, live stream at your end. <laughs> Although I've lost your mic now, I can't hear you. You you muted your mic. It looks like in Zoom. Okay, there yes. we go. Technology. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I'm some I'm somewhat of a I'm somewhat of a lotite, but um. Are you sure you need to get rid of us South Queenslanders just yet? <laughs> well, <laughs> mate, even if, <laughs> if this bubble, mate, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of happy to go it out. Mine. <laughs> But um, look, I, I, I suppose I should do the formal part um, of uh, of starting off. This welcome to Northern Vibe, uh, everybody. I'm Matthew Maloney. Um, I'm lucky enough today to have uh, David uh, Pello. That's Pello, as in yellow, or hello, not pillow. That's the mistake I made when <laughs> I, I first I first met him. But Dave is a really really interesting chap. Um, I first became aware of I first became aware of him in 2018 when i uh, was i was watching his blogs i was uh of i sort of recognized that he was a man who was uh, passionate and articulate and i invited him to one of our new state meetings up here in north queensland now the person he was with ladies and gentlemen was uh, uh, professor david flint um uh, and i must say i i kind of if it had been me sharing that platform with him i would have been very very nervous but David handled it like an absolute pro. Um, he, he did very, very well indeed. Um, David is a, uh, a Christian conservative writer and commentator. He's the editor of Good Source. He's a convener of the annual Church and State Summit. Look, David indicates that uh, he believes in natural law and freedoms, as all Christians do, objective truth and justice, personal responsibility and voluntary charity, strong nations and families, free markets and small government. His weekly live show and podcast are exclusively produced for the Good Source audience. So that's S A U C E, not S O R S O U R C E. It's really worth watching, ladies and gentlemen. I log on to it pretty regularly now, um, and it was, of course, David that introduced me to it. But there's a lot of other excellent presenters there, so I do strongly recommend that you get onto the Good Source. Um, you like and you share uh, the videos that you, that you see there. Um, Look, many of these articles are now syndicated across Australia and New Zealand, and um, I'm really, really happy to have him here. He's also been published in The Spectator, which is the oldest continuously published magazine in the world. That means he's made it, ladies and gentlemen. I, <laughs> when I first saw him in The Spectator, I was like excitedly on the phone going, Dave, you've got in The Spectator. It's the longest continuously published you know, magazine in the world. Like, kudos to you. All right. Um, David lives in the southeast, and I'm keen to get his perceptions as someone in the city, as as we're as we're trying to boot. Uh, sorry, I'm keen to get his perceptions in regards to the new state movement. Now, for those new listeners who are tuning in the first time, uh, Northern Northern Vibe is a um, is a podcast that's interested and formed around the new state movement. Um, I'm a member of an organisation called Boot Brisbane which exists to form a new state for North Queensland. David living in the southeast corner and being an articulate person and having spoken at one of our and having spoken at one of our meetings, I'm really, really keen to get uh, his side of the story. All right. Now, David, you are part of the uh, city that we're trying to boot, but I assure you, look, it's no offence, OK? It's <laughs> about the people. It's not even about the elected representatives, OK? It, it's about the system. And as much as we're kind of like being ironic, it is important to actually note that, like it's it's nothing personal. And how Brisbane came about really is because of the uh, 2017 electoral redistribution. Um, I'm just going to I'm just going to read a couple of facts here. The 2017 electoral redistribution resulted in four extra electorates being created in the southeast corner. 
As a result, there are now 93 electorates in Queensland, 73 are less than uh, 250 kilometres from the Brisbane CBD. But that leaves only 70, about any leaves, that leaves only 20 electorates for the rest of Queensland. Now, even if elected representatives were not bound by party politics, this leaves, uh, this, it kind of makes them very, very, it makes it difficult for them to um, adequately represent the people of North Queensland. That's literally thousands of square kilometres and over 1 million people who are um, arguably uh, seriously underrepresented. So I hope that gives some degree of context to, as, as to why we're doing this. And as someone from the southeast corner, do you kind of understand why, why we're doing this? Yeah, definitely I do. Um, I, I, one of the underlying values I have, which is very sympathetic to the case for a new state, is that of competitive federalism. Uh, and, and that is essentially the opposite of a centralised government, uh, that you actually have more efficiency and smaller bureaucracy whenever you have more centres of government. And, and that's possibly inverse to people's instincts and intuitions, um, but it's actually the case. If you just had one big uh, centralised government with no um, outsourced, you know, decentralised uh, centres, um, then you actually have a bigger bureaucracy than the sum of all the centres would be if you went for, for decentralised government. So um, competitive federalism essentially says... Let all the states be sovereign, let them all be independent, let them do what the majority of their citizens and residents prefer, uh, and let's experiment. So let's do things uh, the way the Daniel Andrews government does and see if the results are better than the way the South Australian government does them. Uh, and then let's compare the results. And at the end of that, we can be smarter. But if we all do it exactly the same way, who's to say uh, we didn't do things the best possible way? Uh, who's to say um, we did do things the best possible way? It could be that there were heaps of better experiments. So we see Taiwan doing different. This is the benefit of having different jurisdictions, as we see in COVID. Now, um, globally around the world, people are doing things different differently. We can compare and contrast and, and learn really good lessons from it. Um, the reason um, the Gold Coast boomed was because of competitive federalism. Essentially, Gold Coast was a sleepy seaside town um, full of retirement people and not the thriving metropolis it is now. Uh, and then Joe Bjorki-Peterson said, hey, I've got a great idea. Let's stop uh, taxing people's estates when they die. Um, and, and everybody said, Joe, that's a terrible idea. You'll gut your revenue. Yep. Um, and um, he said, no, nope, she'll be right. And all of the uh, a significant number of, of businesses, business owners and, and employers uh, migrated their businesses and relocated them to the Gold Coast and it made it a huge metropolitan area now. And the other states were losing so much business to the better environment uh, of Queensland um, that they had to copy. And the other states having an inferior taxation model uh, then copied Queensland and now no state in Australia has death duties anymore or estate taxes. Uh, and, and so um, the benefit for North Queensland of having the ability to run their own affairs the way that they want to, I think is a fundamental principle and a, a proven asset to a commonwealth of, of states and, and republics. Uh, America does it slightly differently. Um, they're a lot more competitive than Australia. Australia over the last uh, 50 years in particular, but, but certainly since Federation, has moved further and further away from Federation to centralisation. Um, and that's a, a result of the High Court and not the Constitution. But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah. Th Look, that's, that's my underlying sympathy. I'm like, mm. you should be able to have what you want. Look, um, you've actually gone on to a, a topic that I kind of uh, am very, very happy that you, you brought on. It's something that I didn't expect to, uh, candidly, I didn't expect to discuss with you. And I do really want to get the Brisbane perspe perspective shortly. We'll, we'll move into that. But mm. you're spot on. And in fact, that's precisely the reason why I became involved in the movement. Initially, for me, um, it was uh, it's all about the Federation. Now, I'm also a member of an organisation called the Sir Samuel Griffith Society, which um, for any listeners out there, uh, if you're interested in the uh, decentralisation of government and you're interested in what comp competitive federalism means 
and uh, incidentally, if you if you really love uh, hearing fantastic debates, if you like meeting some great brains, it's a fantastic organisation to join. Uh, we have an annual conference, and it's uh, it's kind of how I started to get my head around these these concepts that we're speaking about. But Dave, uh, you, you you've raised an excellent point. When I'm kind of speaking to people uh, down south, or indeed in other states. Uh, people talk about, well, you know, surely cooperation is a better way than, than competition. Now, I kind of, uh, I'm very ambivalent about that because uh, first, it implies that competition um, competition isn't a form of, uh, that, sorry, that cooperation doesn't involve a degree uh, of competition or that competition doesn't involve cooperation. The best way of explaining it is through a game. If two people are playing a game, be it chess or football or, you know, anything else, they're in competition with each other. But at the same time, uh, they are they are also cooperating. They're agreeing to abide by a certain uh, certain amount of rules. Um, they have some things in common, and they're both seeking the same outcome. So, this strange idea when I'm speaking to people, they go, "Well, we really, you know, we just got to cooperate more." I go, "Well, yes, but competition is a form of of cooperation. It, 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 it's it's absolutely necessary for that to happen, and it's through co- it's through um, uh, you know, cooperative, uh, cooperative competition, I suppose, would be the best way of putting it, that, that we do come to the best outcomes. Uh, if the idea of, you know, people just sitting down and reasoning things out worked, well, you know, communism would have worked because it was a, it, it's, it's when you read it, when you look at the principles behind it, it's, it's a beautiful, and appealing idea. It's just that it doesn't work. Yeah. That's not the way that, that the human mind works. And it comes down to, you know, these really deep levels of, how human beings think, uh, what we want, and uh, and the recognition of some fundamental values. So yeah, I I, I totally agree with you with your reasoning there, and and um, I, I suspect we're going to have a couple of um because you know listeners, I I should tell you that um, David is no walkover, uh, and there are there are a couple of things that 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 um, I know he's going to pull me up on, and I'm I'm really looking forward to that, and I know you are. Can I start already? Yes. Please, please, uh, don't please don't shy away from competition. Like stop the pansy violet petal shrinking violet, you know, namby pamby. Of course it's a competition. Of course it is. If if you <laughs> if you want cooperation, you you you've got a cartel. Uh, that's not in the interest of of anybody. Uh, what you want is competition. Free market thrives on competition. The consumer wins when there's competition. Um, That's exactly the best thing for it. And democracy is no less a marketplace uh, than your supermarket. If you want the supply of the the best ideas and the best policies and the the best combination of those things, then you need, uh, you don't just need competition between politicians and the parties within your state. You actually need your state competing with other states to, to be able to attract the, the best of what the other state has. So if you want the best school curriculum, then you need competition between school curriculums. Otherwise, there is no incentive to do better. Uh, and this is just, uh, we could take ages getting going down this rabbit trail, but yeah, absolutely it's a competition. And that is the best possible incentive for consumer friendly outcomes and by consumer friendly i just mean residents and citizens mm-hmm. when we're talking about democracy and states so yeah don't shy about competitions it, it's not a hostility thing uh, mm-hmm. but it is a competitive thing we want to be the best state and that sense of loyalty and allegiance uh, creates so much goodwill and cohesion um, it's why patriotism is a value because we're actually competitive with other nations. We want to be the best nation in the world. We want to be the best destination for, for businesses, uh, for those who are persecuted. And, and, you know, and we, yeah, anyway, competition, bring it on. Yeah, a- absolutely. Absolutely. Look, um, because this is something that is turning into a little bit of a love fest, I- I'm going to, um, uh, look, I genuinely <clears throat> that a split will be of benefit uh, for the North. And that's why I'm most interested in it. But um, I think separation needs to benefit the South as well. And- um, I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> why? Uh, it doesn't need to benefit everybody. It, it, I mean, that's, that's like, 
that's like uh, saying competition needs to suit the cartel uh, or benefit both. No, but the, we, we're not. You shouldn't be seeking a, a loss. It should just be again democracy. You you, you should have the right to self determination, um, and we shouldn't be able to hold you captive. Uh, certainly not. And, you know, it would be selfish of us to say, no, you can't because it would be bad for us. Well, hmm. well that's like me telling my neighbor he can't do what he wants on his property because it's bad for me. Well, no, yeah. that's your backyard. You do what you want. And, and we'll look at it. It's nice to talk and consider each other. But you know, I, I think. Um, oh, yeah, well, we're not we're not our neighbor's keeper to um well, yeah, I mean, individually, that's a principle, but um, collectively, as governments, it's it's not um, your your first responsibility as a government. If we if we're going to talk theology, your first responsibility as a government is to your citizens. Um, a better example would be um, as a father. My first responsibility is to my children, not my neighbor's children. I don't even have an equal responsibility to my neighbor's children. They are secondary. I'm not irresponsible to them. I drive slow in the neighborhood. And uh, if there was a dog attacking them, I would risk my life to save them. Um, but they don't come before my children. Um, and so likewise, Queensland shouldn't worry about what's good for New South Wales. Australia shouldn't worry about what's good for China. Um, and North Queenslanders shouldn't worry about what's good for Southeast Queenslanders um, above and beyond or, or to the detriment of their own backyard. Um, well, we shouldn't have to, but remembering that there's going to be a degree of electoral process in this. I Well, there's political strategy. There's political strategy, yeah. yeah. I was speaking um, to Jason Costigan about this. He was he was my second interview, and he was he was uh, equally, I must say, dismissive of, um, dismissive of, of the idea as you are, but let, let me explain my reasoning to the you. idea of looking after Southeast Queensland. Yeah, well, no, of, of it being mutual benefit, not so much looking after. Um, yeah. Again, it, it, well, I agree. You need to be um, the, politics is the art of the possible, and so you can win the argument and lose the debate. Um, but um, yeah, so incentivizing Southeast Queenslanders or answering their concerns is is probably what prudent. Hmm. But I think the real benefit will be this. Now, right now we've got, what, 33,000 uh, electors per electorate, um, whereas in South Australia they've got 25,000, uh, I believe, electors per electorate. Now, for complete clarity, Brisbane doesn't have an official policy. We have a number of discussion points in regards to where the, the border should be. But for the purposes of this discussion, and again, so I'm not misrepresented, this is just for the purposes of this discussion, Let's say the line is drawn a little bit south of Gladstone, which I think would be wise and, and prudent, and that's the kind of area that I, I like to discuss around. Um, if the line is drawn there, and uh, that would mean a massive electoral, uh, you know, restructure of both, you know, the north and, of course, uh, New South Queensland, if I can, if I can articulate it that way. Now, it's going to mean that uh, these. Hey, we get to keep the name, okay? Yeah. That's, a, that's a deal breaker. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we can we can fight about that when, when <laughs> the time comes. Yeah, but um, again, if you can, guys can be New South Queensland. You get and the Maroons jersey. That's also a deal breaker. Every time, every time we we have this, um, because we've had a lot of public meetings, as, as you well know, and this question always comes up. And <laughs> I used to laugh and be dismissive about it, but I, but I realised that it's um it's it, it links into identity. It's very much yeah. it's the best way of articulating uh, identity, both shared and separate. But, you know, these these football teams and these ideas of uh, who gets this color and you know who gets these symbols and everything they matter, um, and they're going to be very important. Uh, they're going to be very important discussions. And indeed, if you look at the federation debates, uh, they you know these these were equally big issues. You know, uh, Victoria, uh, Queensland wanted to be called Victoria, but Victoria took the name first, so we took the Queen's land. Yeah. So, this big fight. Interesting. Uh, I hadn't heard that. That's uh, interesting. Very patriotic. Very loyal to our sovereign. We are. Yeah. Well, quite, qu quite so. But just imagine this uh, re uh, this electoral redistribution. That means that uh, so if you've got a line pretty much straight across from just uh, you know just south of Gladstone, all of those areas in the south and the southeast, they're all of a uh, you know the body politic is going to be a lot smaller. Brisbane is going to be dealing with uh, a lot smaller area. Um, rather than, and, I, and again, I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, but rather than projecting uh, the, the values of of uh, of Brisbane 
um, environmental groups and stuff like that into North Queensland. Oh, be disrespectful. Well, I, I kind of... I remember in my speech in, in Cairns uh, being very disrespectful of the, the notion that uh, North Queenslanders should have the West End Greens crocodile management policy imposed on them. Uh, a bunch of yahoos who've never even seen a paddock, uh, let alone a crocodile. Mm, quite so. And, and look, you know, that, that really did, uh, that, that really, I, I got to admit, I use that line all the time and I've used it in a number of my speeches, David. So um, thanks very much. Uh, you know, a great form of flattery is having someone steal stuff off you. And I've, I've, got, I've kind of done that. Uh, uh, True. Um, I, I do that too. Yeah, but it, 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 you know, we too are kind of conservative about conservation. We just want to make the decisions as to, you know, what we can, uh, you know, what we decide to conserve and yeah. what, and, and what we decide to, uh, and, you know, what we want to, uh, where we want to create our, uh, where we want to create our wealth, what areas we want to expand, what areas we want to, expand, sure. if I can use the word, but it's going to force the Southeast to kind of do that too, because no longer will it be this abstract concept of the cattle stations in the, in the far North and the far West. It all of a sudden, I mean, well, okay. So we're a smaller, smaller, smaller body politic. Um, yes, we do want to conserve places. Yes, we get that, but we're not going to be generous with uh, North Queensland. We're not going to lock all of that up. We're not going to prevent the indigenous people from being able to better themselves from cow cockies, from being able to better their land. We're not, we're, mm. you can, you can no longer do that. They're going to have to decide. And again, you know, everybody wants to, I'm a bushwalker. I'm, I'm a hunter. I'm a diver. I, you know, I, I want places where I can, where I can go and do those things and, and take, take, take my children. We, we all do, but the Southeast then will have to be a little bit real about um, creating its wealth too, because depending on where you draw the line and if you draw it around about the area I'm talking about, we kind of create more wealth and we, we kind of fund you a bit. So um, we'd like to be able to keep that money for ourselves and, and develop our own interests in our hospitals and all those sorts of things, which is a concept I, I know you're in complete agreements with. But the benefit mm. for you guys is that finally it's going to focus the minds of the electorates, uh, of, of the electors on reality. And with smaller electorates, I think you find that a lot of these massive blocks will be broken up. That's going to be one of the biggest things for you. You're going to get the same things that we want. But we want control, we want empowerment, and we want people with skin in the game making the decisions. Well, the same thing is that's what's going to happen with you guys down south. You're going to get that same power as well. Does that kind of make sense? Um, I'm not sure how we would get more power. Um, I guess I'm not quite following that line of thinking. Well, I, I, should, I should qualify it for the, you know, power for the regions. It, the regions down south will have more relevance and their their concerns and considerations will have to be taken into consideration by the by the Brisbane. Perhaps only by lack of competition for oxygen in elections um, with with North Queensland. Um, the the metropolitan Queenslanders would um, even more disproportionately outbalance those of, of outlying regions then. Well, um, look, it would depend on how, again, remembering what I said about the electorates. So if they only had 25,000. Look, I think one of the most pressing like. needs for democratic reform in, in Queensland is the restoration of an upper house, uh, the Legislative Council. Um, and one of the best arguments against that, or, or sorry, one of the most potent arguments against that, it's actually a terrible argument, is um, the oh no, more politicians uh, kind of argument. Um, now that's something you're gonna have to deal with if you're suggesting smaller electorates because it's ultimately going to mean more MPs. Um, mm. However, an upper house doesn't have to mean more MPs. In, in fact, uh, I'm in, in, is it 35 federal electorates in Queensland? I... I'm not in a position to say it off the top of my head. Uh, I'll just Google it quickly. Okay. We should, we, should get a, we should get a brain's trust with that. But um, look, that is one of the other questions that I was going to lead into later on. Uh, you know, the formation of this new state is definitely going to allow us to, um, you know, review the unicambrial system. But it had also, again, look, it's going to allow you guys to do the same sort of thing. You're going to sit there and go, well, do we really want to keep this unicambrial system? It's 30. 30. Um, unicameral, um, 30, 30 federal electorates. Now, 
the way we need to introduce this is my theory and it's not mine i've just copied it imitation um the way we need to implement or return the upper house to queensland and there's a distinct benefit for what you're trying to pursue uh, in doing so uh, but the the upper house uh, the proposal is forget about all the electorates that exist at the moment for every federal electorate which is 30 we divide it into two or or don't divide it but we have two lower house mps for each federal electorate so each electorate then federally would have one federal politician mm -hmm. two state politicians in the lower house the people that make the legislation and do the budget etc mm -hmm. um, and then one upper house um, politician so currently we've got 93 state politicians with 30 federal electorates, we would go to 60 in the lower house and 30 in the upper house. So we'd actually end up with less politicians than we currently have. Um, and, and two looking after a federal electorate for state issues is more than enough. You don't need to have a low number like 25,000. Um, but uh, the benefit then of having an upper house is that um, you've got smaller, pro smaller proportions. So all of the uh, all of the regional centres have their federal electorates, um, which are uh, there's there's less of a disparity numerically between the the metropolitan electorates and the and the uh, regional electorates. But they, I mean, that's how the Senate works in Australia. It's meant to be that each state has an equal number of senators. Um, and and that it doesn't matter that Tasmania is so much smaller than New South Wales. Mm. Um, so you know if we could tweak that plan a little bit to make sure that um, as as each electorate goes, then yeah. Anyway, that's that's the yeah, I, I, possibility I, I, there. I, I do see where you're coming from, and of course, um, way of explanation. Uh, it's not just the can speaking. It, it's not just the can speaking event we've had. You know, Boot Brisbane has been very active in a number of, uh, of other areas. We've uh, gone out to Mount Isa. We had a trip all down the East Coast where we went to Townsville, uh, Rockhampton, Gladstone, as far south as Bundaberg. And that was an excellent trip. And we found a consistency of, of concerns. One of them was the, one of them was, uh, you know, no more, no new politicians. But the way that we kind of countered that was just by pointing out the, a simple fact. And that is, that is this, you can't ask for more representation and less, less representatives. Mm. That, 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 is, that, that is the very, uh, that, that's the very definition of, uh, you know, to, of a totalitarian cartel. You know, mm. people are going to get together when, when you have that. So, look, I'm, that's a good answer. I'm pro having cake and pro eating it. Um, you know, yeah. I, I don't know many people that aren't, but this is one of those circumstances where you know, you really can't have have one or the other. That seems to resonate with people too, and especially when you frame it within the context of um, of Senate representation. Now, uh, right now, is in it? I think it's twelve senators. We uh, for for uh, for each state. Um, so we'd get 12, 12 senators for our, for our area, just to, just above uh, Gladstone. Um, or and you guys that have it down there, but like perhaps it could be. Or is it is it ten or twelve? I think it might be eight. No, you're right. Twelve. Okay. All right. All right. There we go. So, master. So, um, Google just spoke. So, uh, that was my encyclopedic brain. Okay. <laughs> um, but look, even if a law was passed saying, okay, well, well, ten, uh, you, you're going to get ten representatives. That really resonates with the people of North Queensland because we can say, well, you know, that means we're going to get the tenders. That means that because, uh, you know, we've got a boat building industry and there's other things up here. Well, imagine having senators sitting down there, 10 senators barracking for you know, the development of industry, uh, mm. the development of dams or the development of, 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 what, of whatever it is. That kind of really resonates with people. And when I, I, tend, to front, I tend to find, even in places like Mount Isa, which actually has a very high itinerant population, uh, as opposed to, you know, places like Bundaberg, which has a, a very high, a relatively high stable population that really resonated with people. So um, it, it's, I'm not dismissive of the argument and I'm, I'm actually not disagreeing with you because it's, it's something that we do have to face, but it's, it's not an insurmountable problem and framed in the right, mm. 
people kind of get it. Also, when you kind of think, that, um, I think there are going to be massive implications for this. I'm really glad that you brought up the, the idea of federalism. There are going to be massive implications for a new state for the way business is done uh, in Australia. We've, we've had that discussion and pointed that out. But one of the really things that, one of the things that I find most concerning is, I've forgotten the exact age group because uh, I don't have the I don't have the paper off uh, off top of my head, but um, I saw on a reputable website that young people uh, defining young people under the age of I think it was thirty five, uh, disproportionately, are, are becoming more and more disenchanted with uh, with democracy. Now I think one of the reasons that is that is happening is because precisely of this lack of representation. Now again, you can't have your cake and you can't eat it. If you want representation and you want and you want democracy and you want to partake in democracy, well, first you've got to get out there and you've got to believe some things, you've got to campaign, you've got to argue, you've got to debate, you've got to do all those things. But second, you need to have representatives. Um, and if you find that your voice matters, so you can go down and speak to your local your local state MP, and it matters. You can actually resolve an issue. One of the little cat's cries um, we. Uh, we kind of use is uh, you and me without the 73 because obviously with um you know with taking away the 20 state electorates that leave 73 straight electorates uh in, in the southeast so when i'm speaking to people in the region areas i said look even even if we disagree on policy so if i'm speaking to people uh who are you know very green people and you know of course we've got to speak to them you know I, i've had some great conversations with um with, with, with deep greens in a lot of these areas and some of them kind of, some of them kind of see it. Like I see this ambivalence when I'm speaking to um, deep green people. They like the idea of like really being out of control and, and kind of lock up their areas, uh, but they understand that it's going to mean a lack of centralisation. And depending on where they are, depending on where they were, depending on whether or not they trust the, the, their neighbours and whether or not they have a lot in common with their with their neighbours, really did change the conversations uh, that, that that I had with them. So some of them really like. The idea of of central power, so they can just kind of like, well, there's only one, there's only one election we've got to win, and that's the one in Canberra. Like, you know, get rid of the states, get rid of, you know, get rid of all these things. If we just we just do that, and that way we can impose our will, because we're the guys, we can just you know impose our will on people. But again, when you, uh, if you find it in, in an area, and you know, Cairns is a surprisingly environmentalist place, not in the deep green Brisbane sense. But in the sort of Matt Maloney redneck sense, the I want to go fishing, you know, I want crayfish in the water when I when I go and spear them. Yeah. So you know, I, I really want to kind of look after those sorts of things, and and that's the way that we can have those. That's the way that we can have those conversations. So if, um, so if my green friend and me can sit down without the seventy three, I find that that resonates with um with people, even uh, people from you know very who have very different worldviews than than, than we do. Or the well, sorry. I mean to use the royal prerogative we because we do actually differ in, in some ways that than, than uh, myself and some of my deep green friends do i don't have any extra thoughts on that um well, I, 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 just on the thought of, of green environmentalism um I, I think most people are conservationist inclined um greens mean a lot more than that uh, and there's a lot of conservationists who've been tricked into voting green thinking that it's primarily an environmental party uh, when it's a deeply culturally revolutionary party um, and on the topic of conservation uh, their definition of conservation is closer to uh, neglect than sustainable management no, I, I absolutely look I, I you know i um neglect and abandonment and and you know treating humanity as a virus uh, and believing in myths like overpopulation, um, which is again where there starts to be this crossover between their version of extreme environmentalism and extreme social agendas. Yeah, um, absolutely. But um, you know, we've we've got to be able to talk, and I, and I believe a decentralisation of. Power. Yeah, look, I think one of the things I disagree with that you said, um, and and I probably it, it's probably a case of. Uh, to a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Um, in the diagnosis of people not liking democracy, it's probably not... I, I wouldn't have thought it was um, lack of representation. I would have thought it was lack of education. Um, and 
and I guess that's why I do what I do. And so maybe I'm the hammer seeing the problem as a nail. Um, yeah. Again, it, it's just these people who have no idea what democracy is. They have no idea what socialism is. They have no idea what capitalism is. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah. and yeah. they are manipulated emotionally, um, certainly by left-wing narratives um, and, and certainly by the mainstream media. People like... Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, you know, it's just, just crazy. I didn't, I did, we published an article today on The Good Source about Teen Vogue advocating for the abolition of landlords. Property and accommodation is now a human right. Gimme, 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 gimme. It's just, you're taking economic advice from Teen Vogue? That's terrible. Yeah. These are not the people we need educating our young people about politics. This is why they think democracy is bad, is because their teachers are dumb as doorknobs. Well, I mean, I kind of, um, I, I don't, I kind of, I, I'm really seeking a debate, actually, but to be candid, I'm agreeing with you more than I'm not, with the following qualifications. Um Participation is a form of education. Oh, yeah. And, and, yeah, and participation go. needs to be real. Yeah. Like, it needs to mean something. Again, you need to be able to sit down. Like, if you've got an issue, um, and you need to be able to sit down and talk to it with a staff member from your, from your local MP's office and, um, and, and solve it. And, look, one of the other um, – we're actually a little bit over time, so I'm going to kind of um, – there is one – there is um, – I'll get a couple of comments off you uh, shortly, but – one of the things I would, I really wanted to raise, and I know this is a little bit kooky, but I, I really like raising it because it's such an interesting, uh, such an interesting point. When we were at one of the, uh, when we were at uh, one of the regional discussions, it might have been the one at the table ends. I'm not sure. People started discussing, you know, well, where would the parliament be? Where would the capital be? Um, and all these perfectly reasonable uh, questions. Uh, Bill Bates, who is the president of uh, of Boot Brisbane, made this... G'day, Bill. Sorry? Yeah, he's probably watching. Hey, Il Presidente. Um, uh, he made this wonderful comment that I use all the time and really, really, I've got to say, resonated with me a lot. He started talking about uh, the, the, the star... He started, well, kind of like Star Wars. He used the analogy of the Star Wars Federal Senate. Now, we've all seen the movie where, you know, you have these, you have these people that are beaming into this area and they're having the discussions there. Well... <laughs> It's no longer fantasy. And imagine what that would do. Uh, imagine what that would do for the mindset. Now, we know, we know the facts of human psychology. When one human being moves into a group of another human beings, that person starts to not so much moderate, but at least, at least has a desire to fit in with that group of people. So if you've got, if you've got a really good uh, North or Central or, or Western Queensland representative, by well, the simple fact of being with um, uh, other people in the southeast corner in a different environment with people who think differently, that's going to affect that person's psychology. It's going to affect the way they vote. It's going to affect all these sorts of things. Th these are human characteristics. They're kind of immutable. There's really nothing we can do about them. But imagine overcoming that problem with something like, you know, President Bates's um, Galactic Senate. So you could be sitting there. You could have a person who would walk in with a problem. They're sitting there discussing it with the MP. The MP looks at his or her watch and goes, oh, look, sorry, I'm really enjoying this. In fact, it's relevant to the discussion I'm having. I've just got to beam into Parliament now. So they go into the next room next door. They Skype in kind of like this and they, they have a discussion. Now, that person has just come from the room where they're talking about. It. They're still in their environment. They're still mentally in their area. They're still physically in their area. And they haven't joined the herd mentality of the, of, um, of the critical mass of um, of well, I use politicians when I want to slag um, people and elected representatives when I want to say, <laughs> but, you know, in the critical mass of politicians there in, in, in the southeast corner. Just, I, I really think, you know, when Bill raised it, I've got to say, and he, it was almost a throwaway line, but that really resonated with me. And, and mm. from a basic understanding of human psychology, I really think that that would make a massive difference on representation. Let's think of the implications for democracy as we're talking about. And then think of the flow on implications for the, you know, these other issues that we've kind of discussed where it's been like, well, all right, um, that's a form of education where it kind of matters, where that person walks out of the office and go, you know, there was a point to that. 
there was a point to me talking to my local MP. Mm -hmm. And electorate, the, you know, for 33,000 people, and you look at something, something, an electorate the size of Cook, like this is not a shot at, um, at, at, Ms, at Ms. Louis, like uh, who's the current member for Cook. Like it doesn't matter who is there, but that's an enormous electorate. And it's disproportionately Indigenous, it's true, but there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of interests that, I don't want to use the word conflicting, but there is some, you know, there are some interests that are in tension there and there are some interests uh, th th that are the same. Again, when you get something that's that big with such a, you know, big demographic, you kind of really, the, how, how representative um, that representative is, is debatable. And again, that's no sledge on Ms. Louie, um, you know, because I'm, I'm, Boot Brisbane is, uh, I have my political views um, and I would suggest that, you know, broadly speaking, uh, where I see myself as a, a moderate conservative libertarian, um, how true that is and how accurate my self-image is, is, is discussable. But we're trying to, you know, I don't want to annoy because uh, we're getting quite a few hits uh, on this and I really don't want to annoy Labor voters. Like, and I don't want people who are concerned about green issues and I don't want to, I don't mm. want to annoy anyone who has a, a worldview different than me. In fact, we want to bring them into the debate. So, I, I, yes, I've got my worldview. Um, yes, I think, of course, politics influences worldview and, and there's a circular nature to that. But I really genuinely believe that with us speaking, uh, you know, that, that this is going to revitalise democracy, going to revitalise the fed, Federation. And it's going to be good for everyone. It really is going to be a win-win. And I don't say that, you know, just looking, I don't say that just looking for this idea of like, oh, you know, it's, isn't it nice? It's like, no, no, like this matter, like democracy matters. The legitimacy of democracy matters. Yeah. Um, the legitimacy of the federation matters. Competition matters. Cooperation, uh, co you know, uh, cooperative competition matters. Competition, competition matters. All of these concepts are really, yep. really important. I, I think um, one of the struggles is, is going to be the common sentiment nowadays that lead, lend, that you expressed before, get rid of the states. So getting another state is is like getting another politician. It's the thing that people haven't been taught to value. Mm. They haven't, and it's ignorance. They just don't know that the colonies, the states are, are the backbone and the fundamental building blocks of Australia. Mm. Um, it's not the town councils and it's not the Commonwealth. Um, it is It is the states, sovereign, independent, and fiercely competitive and, and proud. Um, and exactly. when, you, when you build that back into our education or their education um, post national curriculum, um, when the government's had their turn indoctrinating them for 12 years, then we've got to get our hands on them and say, hang on, um, regardless of multiple high court decisions, centralizing power and premiers, abdicating responsibilities from the states back to the prime minister and, and the federal parliament, the states are where it's at. The states are where you get best representation. The closer decisions are made to you, the better the decisions represent you, the better the quality of decision and the smaller the bureaucracy. Um, now, what would be better than that is more states. More states would be the, the thing to that. The other challenge I think you're going to have is Australians in particular, but people in general, um, are inclined to make significant changes when there's significant problems and inclined to maintain the status quo when they're comfortable. And one of the problems we have is an incredible amount of prosperity and peace in Australia. There's no significant problems that need solving, which would be solved by a new state. There are certainly going to be better representation and better but you know there's nobody starving there's no tyrannical regimes um you know arresting people in the middle of the night disappearing them their family don't hear from them for you know three years before they you know it, it compared to the rest of the world I, look we've definitely got problems that we want to do better in australia but compared to the rest of the world we're really really blessed um and so that also that level of comfort is going to make most people go, we're okay. Hmm. That leads me on to the final question that we're going to wrap things uh, up on. 
when I was speaking to Bernard Salt, you know, Australia's one of Australia's <clears throat> who's been great with his time. Um, so if him or any of his staff are, are, are listening, thank you very much, Bernard. That certainly hasn't gone unnoted or unappreciated by us. He fundamentally articulated uh, almost exactly what you did. He goes, look, it's because things are pretty good. Um, he goes, anyone who actually knows about, and I'm paraphrasing here, uh, but anyone who know, actually knows about the issues and understands what's going on will see the complete logic of, of what you want. Right? Is it legal? Yes. Can you afford it? Yes. Is it desirable? Yes, if you believe in democracy. He said, but you haven't got an emotional uh, hook. You haven't got you know, a good enough slogan. You haven't got something that's going to ignite people. Just off the top of your head, is there anything that you can think of that you know, the new state movement you know, could or should be using it? But again, remembering that you know, we really do want to... Uh, we want this to resonate with the people who we want to uh, politely and um, amicably divorce from. Think off. Sorry to put you on the spot. Um, you, yeah, look, I'm not going to come up with anything really uh, amazing straight up. Um, and uh, the emotional kind of thing that you need um, isn't going to be nice towards Brisbane. Um, I'm thinking something like... Uh, the crocodile management plan developed by West End doctors' wives doesn't cut it here. Soccer mums, something like that. Don't want to be uh, sexist, but the West End crocodile plan uh, doesn't work in Townsville. Doesn't, and you can localize it. Or, um, so, or. anyway, uh, like I said, it, it needs workshopping. Um, you know, I. I grew up in country New South Wales. I haven't spent much of my life in metropolitan regions. And, and yet when I came to Northern Queensland, I, I said when I was there, I was absolutely excited. It's the first time I've ever seen a, uh, you know, just a little bridge over a, that you get on every highway over a dry creek bed. Um, and I've seen them everywhere in Australia, but I've never seen them with beware of the crocodile signs before. Um, that's, that's, that's a novelty for, I think, for anybody south of Bundy, but um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's, a, that's a unique thing that, that you, maybe there's something there. You know, I, we have no idea what it's like to have your dog taken by a crocodile. Apparently that's a thing in North Queensland. It is indeed a thing. We, we think... have no, and to then not be allowed to go and shoot the crocodile, <laughs> that's a problem. Um, I think it's to, my uniqueness that we should focus on, actually, David. So this, this, but, but this is a thing. Like, I don't even have an idea. There's no way the media has educated me that crocodile populations are now encroaching on people's backyards where they never used to. And the answer is a rifle. Well, um, but the problem is a greenie. Um, I'm, I'm going to respectfully disagree with the idea that you uh, got no ideas because you just gave us one and that's... that's that, okay, that's, cool. Well, the other one is um, I, I stayed at some holiday accommodation up in Cairns uh, a couple of years back and um, I decided not to go for a swim for apparently unrelated reasons and then um, uh, what's his name? Man, a bloke up there said oh good thing you didn't go for a swim there's heaps of crocodiles on those beaches i'm like what he goes yeah it used to be a really popular swimming beach but now it's nothing new to see a crocodile there occasionally I'm like there weren't even any signs or anything he goes yeah mate they're everywhere so you know the encroachment on on the common day live experience of north queensland is nobody south of Bundaberg has any idea what that's like hmm. well look um on that uh, on that magnificent idea of uniqueness and the concept that we should focus on that and um, you know we're going to wrap things up thank you very much for turning up uh, for all of our listeners please like and share northern vibe uh, this is only the third interview we're already into the hundreds of likes and shares but we really don't want to stagnate there we need your help um, I promise I will get more professional uh, as, as I go along um, you know David is a is an interesting informative and exciting guest. We have uh, great, we've got some more fantastic guests coming. John Roskam is on next week. Um, and I'm, I'm going to, uh, having a few extra contacts, contacts, it's going to be good. Uh, we're going to have some guests speak about the legalities of it. I'm going to have my, my, my good mate, David Flint, um, on. And it's just really going to be excited, exciting. So please continue to tune in. Do like and share us. We really, really need that. Jump on David's site, um, uh, Pilo Talk. 
Hello. Uh, Hello. Hello. I, I was kidding. I'm kidding you, man. I just had to throw you, You'd pull in my leg. <laughs> yeah. The, the other one was taken by a crocodile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, no, jump jump on Pillow Talk and um, also, uh, you know, jump on the on the good source. It really is interesting and informative. I've seen some, I've seen some excellent uh, discussions there. We need a really good article about uh, the proposal for a new state. Matt, do you know anybody who would want to write that? Uh, I think I can assist. That'd be great. Do that. Let's get it up. Goodsource.news. All right. Well, look, thank you very much. On that, we're going to wrap it up. We've gone a lot longer than I expected. I wanted to keep it under half an hour, but you're... Um, Time flies when you're having fun. Hey, it, it really is. I've sincerely enjoyed this uh, this conversation. Um, I was. I, I thought you'd be a bit more fiery. You almost kind of let me down there. Um, oh, really? Okay. Sorry. I, I want you to treat me like a green. <laughs> uh <laughs> I, I treat the Greens with respect. <laughs> yeah, again, like, you know... It's not their ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, I mean, it's it, they're all our fellow citizens. and Dumb as doorknobs. You know, well, you, well, you can't have a democracy without a demos. And, uh, you know, you That's can't right. have a demos without a, without a conversation. So, you know, I'm sincerely... And it's not as if there's nothing, in, you know... Again, there's this misrepresentation of, of what it means to, you know, be concerned about the environment. It's like, you know, yeah, I kind of get angry when people indicate that, but... We do need to open these conversations, and absolutely, I um I handed out uh, election flyers next to a, a Greens uh, volunteer one election at the Kevin Rudd by election. Uh, that's a, that's a while ago now, and um, I was greener than she was um, on, on everything environmental. Mm. Um, I, I was living a much more sustainable lifestyle than she was, and yeah, um, yeah. yeah it, it's uh, yeah, and we got on great. We had great fun, and she was absolutely surprised that this far right Christian fundamentalist uh, yeah. was so sympathetic with most of her ideas, except for yeah. the social revolutionary ones. Yeah. And actually well, I'm going to get some, um, hopefully some quite left of center people on um, Mr. Pine has um, uh, some of my other colleagues have been in conversation with him. We've got to Awesome. Here. Yeah. And look, he's a really interesting man. I'll so see if I can uh, connect you with one or two other uh, left of center people who are reasonable and fun to have a conversation with. Mate, I, I would really, really appreciate that, actually. I won't drop any names publicly in case uh, they yeah. say no. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and the other thing is they, they mightn't they might want people knowing that you're talking to them. Oh, no, they've been on my show. Oh, right. Oh, there we go. Yeah. All right. Well, look, you know, again, thank you very much. Please like and share. Um, we'll, see you all, we'll see you all next week. Uh, Dave, if you could kind of just stay online uh, while we do all the pausing and all that sort of stuff, because I just do want to have a a quick catch up but um too easy yeah thank you uh thank you david uh, thanks to uh you know my regards to your family thanks to all the listeners and um we'll see you next week bye bye